Okay, and this is now my first video tutorial on uh, how to use cheese cutter from uh, Timo Abaddon. And uh, my name is Carsten Berggren, um, also called Scarsix uh, from the group Offense. And um, I'm trying to uh, teach people how to make sit music with uh, cheese cutter, which is a cross platform tool that emulates a uh, Commodore 64 SID chip and this way enables you to uh, compose for Commodore 64 SID chip directly on a PC, Mac or Linux or whatever you prefer. Um, I'll not uh, go into details uh, about how to install the program, there's a lot of documentation and we have a community on Facebook you can join if you're really interested, so uh, let's get to the business. Okay. When you start up, you get the splash screen, and as soon as you press a bu button, a key, uh, it removes itself. We have three areas in, in this editor. We have the main part, this one, which is the sequencer, where you have uh, all your notes and the tune uh, going on. We have this instrument area, and we have all these lookup tables or programs, as some refer to them, uh, and this one is actually also a an extra column that Timo had to squeeze in here because it couldn't fit down here. So basically we have area 1, area 2 and area 3. Okay. For a start we uh, have three columns here and uh, the columns are SID channel 1, 2, 3 in the chip and uh, this means that any note played in uh, this area will be channel 1 and uh, channel 2 and channel 3 etc. And you can turn them on and off with the control 1, 2, 3 if you notice the, the top bar up here, control 1, then we are on off, on off, the same goes for the other two. So you can easily adjust and uh, hear the channel you want to work with if there's something that doesn't work for you. Okay. Now, how do we start? Um, a blank editor, nothing is in here, no instruments, no programs, no data, no, no, no nothing. So we start from scratch. I would like to uh, address this little setting down here that says it emulates a uh, 8580 chips. Uh, right now that's the mo modern chip from the 64C um, uh, edition. You can also use the older version uh, if you prefer. Uh, it all depends on what kind of music you are going to do and what computer. Uh, you see I changed it here. I hold down control and press F3 and then it changes uh, the SID chip. Um, the emulation of the filters are uh, pretty hard with the older chip, the 6581, and um, um, it's a long discussion, you can find a lot about it on the net, so no need to go into it here, but I prefer the other chip because that's the chip we use for our offense uh, demos normally. So this is what I prefer, it sounds the same on all the 64C models, and it's pretty easy to work with. I, it's not as um, heavy a filter as the old one, but there was also a lot of revision, so if you compose the old chip, you never know how it will sound on somebody else's SID chip if it's not exactly the same revision. Okay, let's go to business. We have this A000, and it means transpose is nothing, because A is our middle value, and we have a 00, which means we are now in sequence or pattern 0 for this channel. It's the same uh, sequence used here and here, so I'll change them. And uh, you do this by uh, I'm moving between the, these uh, three channels with my cursor keys. You can also use tap for quick and shift tap for backwards. It's all made because of uh, Timo wanted to make an editor that was easy and lazy to use. So the more shortcuts for uh, easy uh, ways around with the keys, uh, well, then he implemented it. Yeah. Uh, if you press F5, you go into the actual uh, track or sequence thing and here you can say well I want to start channel 1 in sequence 4 and uh, maybe you want to make your uh, se second channel in uh, sequence let's say 10 we are talking hex so that's 16 and the last one in maybe 20 I'll explain why later but uh, let's say we use these numbers uh, currently there's nothing to do about it because there's no rows to put my notes into so what I usually do I start in uh, channel one, uh, sorry, uh, sequence one, zero, damn it, and uh, press F5 to go back into the note, and I hold down shift and press enter. This inserts 16 clean, clear rows for notes. Right here I could start putting some notes if I want, but I want to leave it blank, and I press shift enter once more, and this gives me a uh, 
sequence of uh, 32 rows now. Uh, usually, myself personally, I work with uh, 64 rows, that's 4 times shift enter, and this becomes a little bit annoying when you make a lot of sequences. So I use my sequence 0 as an empty track, um, which I copy into new uh, sequences, uh, and this way I don't have to press shift enter 4 times every time I make a new sequence. You do what you want, uh, prefer, but I think this is a, a quick way to do uh, new sequences. I press F5 again. And now I'll s select my number 4, which was empty. It doesn't update now. I'm still in this area. So as soon as I switch with F5, now it shows me the contents of uh, sequence 4. I go back into F5, or I stay here, and say Alt and C for copy. And it asks me which sequence do we want to copy from. And as I told before, I use my sequence 0 as my template. Uh, for all my other sequences, so it has the right length for this tune, and, and currently it was uh, 20 or 32 rows, so I'll copy and just press enter. Blam! Then we have my uh, a new sequence called sequence 4 with 32 rows. And I tap to the next channel, say Alt C, copy 0. Tap Alt C, copy 0. Now ready to go. Three empty channels already. Yes. Um, I was thinking about doing drums again, uh, because I did that in my preview video, but uh, I think I'll uh, try and uh, advance a little bit, uh, do something different, just to see how things work here. Um, let's say I want to do like an old tune where you say doom 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 doom, or similar, and, and make a solo or something, and we want that kind of echo thing. So I'll uh, make these two channels play the, the well, doom doom doom, whatever you call it, and uh, maybe you add a solo or something in the last uh, sequence over here. So, um, first we need an instrument. And the instruments are in the second panel, or area, as I call it. And uh, if you notice the I, it has a grey background, as well as short over here has a D that is, uh, has a grey uh, background. And we have wave with a W, and P, and F, and M. And uh, these are shortcuts, so when you need to go into these areas, these tables, then you hold down ALT and then press the corresponding uh, letter. If I say ALT W, I'm down here. If I say ALT P, I'm over here. ALT F, over here, etc. And the reason for not using C here and here is that ALT C is copy. So he choose, Timo, that is, choose M and D. So you'll learn them. It's uh, pretty easy. Uh, and if you want to go back to these three channels, you can say ALT 1, 2, 3. In fact, ALT 4 will jump to the instrument, and 5 will jump to filter, 6 will not do anything. So you could use those numbers too. But 1, 2, 3 for channels, and W, P, F, and M to go in these. Also, there's a, a, a second thing. Uh, when you press TAP inside one of the three areas, it cycles between the windows that are connected. So if I go up in, in this channel, and I say tap, I, sp I go between the three columns, the three channels. If I say control tap, it bounces to the secondary display area. Control, uh, if I press tap here, it goes between this one and that one, because these are two tables, so they are connected, but these are the two information blocks that are connected. If I go to the third block, which is all the programs and lookup data, including short, I say control tap, then I'm down here, and if I press tap, you can see I jump between the connected tables here. They're not connected in the, the terms of they point to each other, but they are sort of same type of lookup tables. Um, so that's that's how it works here. Okay. Yeah. Um, for the instrument, I press Alt and I, and then I'm up here, and then I can edit the instrument. What to put into these eight bytes? Well, as soon as you start moving your cursor, you have a help context help up here telling you that the first byte consists of two values attack and decay and it's uh, on the nibbles so from 0 to 15 or 0 to F you have the values for attack and decay and you have sustain and you have release and then you have some other values here but you'll always need some kind of ADSR uh, to get a voice because that's the volume of your, uh, your instrument. Uh, this one is uh, used for uh, how the the player will reset or initialize each tone 
and the second bit uh, or nibble is uh, for the arpeggio speed and the, uh, and the wavetable speed so if you need a slow changing wavetable you can uh, set in a delay here the higher value the more frames it will spend before it goes to the next row explanation will come later this one hard restart uh, waveform is when you uh, use hard restart here which is 80 and then you pick which waveform it should initialize the, the channel with but never mind that now filter table is a pointer direct row pointer you write the row here let's say as a row 4 then the player will look down here in filter alt f and start playing from this it will initialize with all four values and then it will do whatever is written here and then continue to the next row or whatever row number is written in the last byte all these explanations will uh, be much more easy to understand if you learn one simple trick in this editor Timo made a genius move when he uh, decided to use F12 because F12 tells you exactly what is going on in the table where your cursor is placed so here you have the instrument explained um, in, in short so once you learn what these are you can always look them up and see uh, and get an overview and if you press escape you're out of it if, you, if I say control tap and go down here and let's say I go to the wave table and say ah how does this work I press F12 whoops here we have the two bytes explained of the wave table escape and pulse F12 now we have the uh, pulse table explained and uh, it all makes sense once you get to see how it works but just know that F12 is your help of course you can go online and find the documentation also but um, I like this context help because it actually is embedded inside the player so with each revision of the player the context help can be updated uh, whereas uh, the website and documentation there might be slightly delayed or something but um, let's see how that would work okay um, I already think it's it's nice to have some kind of sound going on before you start making instruments so you know what you're doing so let's say I want to do that doom, 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 just to see how this works I'll pick a pretty um, well semi loud noise uh, tone octave and uh, let's see we have currently selected octave 3 in the editor this means when I press the lower part of my keyboard starting from uh, A and Z and, and working uh, to the right then I have octave 3 if I move my fingers up on the keyboard starting at Q and going right then I have my octave 4 because that's ground octave 3 plus 1 okay and you can change this octave 3 by using your numpad and that's why you need a numpad for this editor uh, I believe there have made been made some fixes where you don't need the numpad but I haven't used them so don't ask me um, I'm not sure they are part of the, the public version of the download uh, but I, I think some Mac uh, distributions has been done where they have fixed it uh, so it also works in other combinations anyways the divide or slash and the multiplier or asterisk on your numpad is the octave selector so you can easily go up and down as I do right now pressing slash and, and uh, asterisk okay um, just to make this simple test I'll just see C4 nah, I'll pick another instrument sorry um, I'll pick an instrument with minus and plus on the numpad so I'll go down to instrument 8 just to make it visible what I'm doing and say C and then I go to mm, let's say this area uh, four rows down and I take the middle for doing this octave thing so I'll take a G and I'll go up to C5 and go down to G and down to C4 and G and C5 and G and now I have this doom 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 kind of thing pretty boring but let's do it, do it basic for a start and when I place myself on this instrument number and press enter it automatically jumps to the instrument 8 or the instrument number you place the cursor on so that's a pretty easy view or shortcut you can just say alt i and then use your cursor keys to scroll up and down and find the right instrument but I'm lazy so I just press enter that works for me okay we need a sound ADSR A is attack that's how fast the sound will reach maximum volume and if you the higher volume you you add the longer time it takes to fade in so uh, I need a, a strong uh, harp kind of sound um, so I'll make a uh, no attack it will be instant on and I think my volume will be C and I'll have it so it doesn't keep the note it just turns off sustain is uh, the volume to keep 
uh, when the note is continuously pressed on your keyboard, if you try to imagine this is a synthesizer. Um, but I want to make a kind of harp or guitar string, so I'll uh, no sustain on this one. And release is how long time it'll take to fade out. Uh, notice that we are playing a note quite fast after, so we can't use a long fade out because one note will remove the previous note. Uh, if you've done chip tunes in, in other platforms, you'll know this. But uh, if you haven't done this before, well, there's no um, multiple keys in the same channel, so uh, it's polyphony. Uh, it's a single tone in each channel, so we have three tones at, ma at max. But you can fake it and make it sound like a much more, but uh, much richer sound if you do this right. But you don't. You only have three, three, three tones. So, okay. I'll make some short fade out. I think nine is is fine for now. And uh, all I need now is a waveform. I need something to trigger the sound, something to turn on. And uh, we have some basic waveforms in the SID chip. In the old SID chip, you had uh, eleven. That's triangle sound. Uh, it's a bit soft. You can use it for fluids and other things. And then you have the triangle or sawtooth. I mean, uh, this is triangle. Then you have sawtooth. It's more sharp, uh, but it it doesn't have a life. It doesn't have a pulse. It's not moving. It's just. Uh, yeah, it can be good for violence and other things, uh, but um, uh, well. I find it uh, rather boring, but that is depends on what you're doing. Uh, it can also be a soft start to a pulse, but never mind that now. And then you have uh, 41, which is uh, uh, um, your pulse. But uh, the pulse is... Um, well, that's why we have pro pulse program. It's uh, a variable uh, sound where you um, set the width of your pulse. And uh, how the chip is made, you just set up a uh, width and it sounds like that but when you have a little smart player like this one where you have a pulse program then we have a little counter that can iterate and change these values each frame and this makes it more live more vibrant so um, I'll show you how this works the first value here is the transpose value and, and when I just edit uh, uh, enter zero zero it doesn't apply anything to my note playing so this is one that's playing C4 at the moment in the first row and then turns on uh, a pulse and uh, this is what I'm happy with right now so I'll just say 7E which is the stop value and I place it in the left column not the right one and this is because there's also another value you can use which is 7F and that's a loop or a jump and then you at which row you want the, this uh, wave program, as we call it, to jump to when it's done or when it reaches here. This is very smart if you are going to do some kind of loop where you are playing here, let's say 21, and it plays 21 all the way. And down here I want to loop at the fifth row where I change to, let's say, I do this an octave up or something. And then I can say, well, play to 5. So this program will start at 21 and then ding 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 and go uh, one octave up and then down and play on and go to f uh, row 5 here jump back and play again and play again and play again until you turn the voice off. So that's a way of doing it. Okay? Yeah. Um, these can be explained in here in F12 so you can find them here if you need them. Um, I have my pulse waveform set, but I don't have a program. So I press Alt-I to go back on into the instrument, and I'm using instrument 8, and I look into F12, and I see hmm, pulse table pointer is byte 6, okay, third from the right. 1, 2, 3, here we go. This one is where I add a pulse program. There's a little extra feature in this version of the player. If you're using CC4.02 and upwards, uh, there's a little trigger here, so if you write 8 in the first nibble, then the second uh, byte is uh, a hard-coded value that goes directly into the pulse. And 8, which is the middle value in the nibble, is the middle or most square pulse value. So if I do like this, I have a ve very square pulse right now. This is as square as you can get it. If I make it uh, 4, it's a half square or whatever it's called. And I'll try and change it while it's playing. Uh, I'm not sure you can hear me, so I'll just try and change it and you can hear it, what happens. And that goes back. That's because uh, the pulse is sort of a width on the left side and the right side of a up and down, uh, like a sinus, but very square. 
you have a high and a low and uh, you decide where the split between high and low is and if you say 8 it's in the middle so it's half up and half down and that's why you get the perfect square sound if you go to the left well if you go half the way it's 4 then it's uh, one th uh, fourth or one quarter of uh, either low or high and it's uh, three quarter on the right side if you go up to C which is four from maximum then it's the opposite then you have three quarters of high or low and one quarter on the right side so basically you could uh, you could go from one to eight and that would be fine because nine A C B C D E F is just the mirrored opposite so anyway that's how it works. A little feature I forgot to mention is uh, up here we can get some default uh, def debug values. If you press Control and press F9 just once and say play, suddenly we see the debug values of what goes into the uh, SID chip and this is actually the direct registers, also these. So if you know something about uh, programming and the registers you can actually see here what is going on. Um, as you can see here this is the note, the actual frequency, and uh, here you have the waveform, 41, and here you have the pulse width, and as you can see it's 0, 8, and then 0, 0, so it's 800, that's the middle. Okay. Now instead of this square, which is very boring, I'll uh, make it point to a pulse down here. So I say the first free row here, uh, never use row 0, it's occupied already by some default settings in the player, don't use that. Never mind what it is, just don't use row 0. Row 1 is the first free one, so I write 0, 1. And now I know the program will start here when it plays the note. Okay, 4 bytes, making a program as we call it. This is a jumper byte or a stop byte like this one instead of 7E e, which you see in the wave table over here for stop 7F is the actual stop here in fact 7F means jump to row 0 that does absolutely nothing um, so it, it's just a, a, a little simple way of doing things if you leave a 0, 0 it automatically goes to the next row when it's done with this row what is this row doing then? first of all this is the initial value of the pulse let's say we want that heart 8 I can say 0, 8 and then it will start at 8 and it did work because it automatically set it to 8 and then it goes on to the next row because there's no delay on how long it should stay in this row the delay is set in the first byte the maximum value is 7F when you're counting up and FF when you're counting down and this means that uh, if I say 10 here and I say a speed of 4 each frame for 10 frames, that's 16 frames because it's hex, it will add 4 to this pulse. Let's see. That's how long it takes to count to 16 frames. Because after the 16th frame, it will go down to this row and set the pulse to 0 and then you can't hear it. So now I'll say stop after these 10 and you'll have a sound. It's a bit boring to me, but it works. Okay, um, now I want to make this a very long sound uh, uh, counter, and I'll start very uh, sharp with a very narrow uh, sound. But it's still able to move, so I can say 8. Okay, mm -hmm. not the most genius sound, but you'll get the idea. I'll try and make it less narrow. Nah, I actually think this one could do. There's a little th trick here. I'm um, turning these two nibbles around because actually this means uh, 180, like this. Oops. If you watch these numbers down here, 180. That's what this actually says because the, the less significant nibble here is uh, removed uh, to make it uh, fit into four bytes. So you're actually reading this like 1, 8, and putting a 0 here in the blank space. Um, so that's what you're doing. Okay. Um, now I've played this for 7F, which I think is pretty much, I think I'll put it down to 40. 
and then I need to make it count the other way around if I want the sound to be interesting uh, because I want to be able to keep the sound going instead of it stops so when I say the opposite of this one I just add 80 so now it's C0 and I say 40 again because it's the same speed this makes me end up exactly the same spot as where I started so when it loops uh, I can hear when it does it to use the value where this ends after 40 frames or 64 actually I say FF that means do continue at whatever pulse value uh, width you had already and when you're done counting bounce back jump back to row 1 this one so the tune will play 64 frames here and then 64 frames here this one subtracts 40 this one adds 40 okay let's hear you can't hear it and the reason for you not to hear that it's counting backwards again is that there's a lot less than uh, 40 frames between the notes here so now we do something interesting I go to the second channel over here and I say I'll uh, copy this and instead of writing it manually and trying to figure out where 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 the tones are I'll just make a copy so I go to the first row say copy take from 10 booty and then I say uh, I press um, on my numpad the number 8 which means that this number down here will uh, in, uh, be uh, changed to 8 ST is step value so as soon as you press a note in here it will step 8 rows down so when I press space to clear this note up here it jumps down to C5 Maps and uh, wraps around and now I do the same for the other note because I only want one note in each channel I do aha let me scroll it in so you can see what happens here now I have half the tune uh, sound in uh, in one channel and the other half, uh, as you can see. Uh, I'll set my step back to one, pressing one on the numpad and press F2 to hear the sound. I like this this kind of sound. This is actually how I made Galactics back in time. My tune as I was 18 years old for the triangle demo that this was the sound uh, I did I'm not sure the pulse values are the same but uh, this is how I build it up okay if I press F7 now I have a track overview it removes the the contents of the tracks and this gives you an option to program the the uh, what's it called uh, the uh, the order in which your tracks are playing and uh, right now I'm pretty happy with this uh, way the, the start goes so I'll just repeat it four times I insert these rows by uh, pressing control enter now holding control and pressing enter once again again I can also say uh, control shift insert then I insert a whole row and control shift delete then I uh, delete the whole row for all three channels but uh, when you need to insert it in the bottom you need to say control enter first and tap control enter tap control enter then you have a free row of nothing and you can then you can say control shift insert okay and delete so this is a quick way of making a long tune if you want okay and I have absolutely nothing over here so I think oh wow this is Okay, I would like to change the transpose now because I would like uh, to try and see how I could do my galactics right now. Uh, just an idea, guy. So I'll uh, need to transpose this down or make a new track with the right notes. But I think I'll just reuse this one. And uh, as I recall my old tune, it goes from C and then it goes down to G sharp. So I'll need to transpose this. Uh, notice that I'm standing in 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 the track, not in the not in the in the notes and I'm using F5 and F6 and F7 in combinations to get in and out of all this F7 goes between track view and notes F6 goes between uh, goes directly to the notes and F5 jumps into uh, the the track part and F5 goes back again uh, I'm not sure why F6 only jumps out we can ask Tim about that <laughs> I can always point at somebody else's <laughs> yeah okay um, right now I'm in the 40th um, row of the tune um, and I started scrolling that was a clever move Carsten um, let's go down here see I can scroll through my tune 
Name me any other tracker on Amiga or uh, PC64 uh, that can do this, except your host editor, new player, which is who invented this idea. It's a genius thing, uh, Jens Christian. Uh, all my thanks of my heart for this giantly great genius idea. And Timo decided this was pretty nice, so he just did the same. This is the reason for me not using Ghost Go Tracker or Sit Player or whatever they're called, Sit Tracker. I, I can't make music without this because I'm very visual. And uh, when I do music, I say Shift F2. And I know exactly this is where I want to change the transpose now. So I don't need to fiddle around and, and figure out which track we're talking about. I can see visually this is where I need to change the note. So I press F5. And here I want to change the transpose. I can try and write uh, 9F and see what happens. And when I change out of this area, it transposes the keys and shows me where they end. It's now B3, which is not right. It needs to be G flat, uh, G sharp, I mean. So instead of writing this value, I'll use a shortcut called uh, Control A and Control G for transpose a key up and down. And this works from this sequence and down. So when I press Control A, all sequences after this one is transposed down. And I'll keep doing this. Oh, there's my G. Nice. I go to F7 and C. Ah, see, the rest of my tune is now in uh, 9C transpose. So that's a minus transpose. And I'll go over here because the other part of the tune needs to do exactly the same if I want this music to start. And after two, which I can see here, after two sequences I need to go into a new transpose because that's how much you went back then. And I recall it as being A sharp. I might be wrong, but I think it's A sharp. And I'll go over here. A sharp, it's a 9E, okay. And the last note will probably be G. And so let's go down here. F5 and see if we can hit a G, that is 9B. Hmm. Not sure about this, but uh, let's see how it sounds. Okay, time to test. Shift F2. That is exactly how it work goes. It ac it's actually a, a bit faster, so I'll change my speed. Uh, it's speed 5 right now. I'll say Control, hold it, and press minus and plus on your numpad to change the speed. I'll say 4. Yeah, that's better. Um, and as I recall my tune, <laughs> yeah, I might be wrong, um, it has a, a slow fade for a start, so it says a so let's see if we can do this. And uh, we need a f at an empty sequence number. And we have used 10 and 20. That's pretty stupid when we're doing it with this different, uh, or whatever. I'll say 30, 31. No, not needed. I'll just take a 30 here. And say copy. See, my length, the, the number here is the length of the sequence. So this one is currently 1 or empty. That's not good. So we need to copy the, the empty. Uh, sequence and that was my zero, so now we have it. Uh, the the right column here is the summed length of your s uh, your song in this channel, so this should match in every channel. Otherwise, your tune will loop very strange, and that can be used <laughs> to some extent. I actually did in our uh, uh, we all connected um, uh, golden moments tune, but that's another story, and uh, it can save some space if you're clever. I hope. Um, but you can uh, you can always see it where your tune gets out of sync if you have forgotten the, the length or made an error if it's an unequal number or something you might have deleted a row by accident or something but um, this should most likely be the same numbers across okay 30 let's say we need a fade in I would think it's a, a dark C4 or a C2 uh, sound so let's see if I make a C2 here. and I need to go octave down I can either do this on my numpad with division and multiply or I can just go to the number here and say 2 
but this doesn't change for all future nodes I'm entering because it's still set uh, it's in octave 3 here so if I use my numpad I can uh, set it this way instead okay and uh, let's just here ah, it has the, the effect I want but it's the wrong instrument because it turns off immediately I need it to fade in so I'll make a new instrument let's say I make an instrument C just to see how this goes and notice I was on the C and press enter it's in the C row and I need to fade in so that's the attack part of the sound I need here and I need a very slowly sound so I'll make a D or E and uh, the next one is how loud volume I want I think I'll have a C to f match this one and it could keep the sound and it will fade out and it will need the same program pulse program that sounds pretty good already so I don't want to invent something new and I have a pulse of 41 already uh, uh, wave I mean waveform so that will work so this is slow fading and this up is used for semi short harp um, thing and uh, I use tap to get over there and I always name my instruments some sort of what the idea was because when I get back to my tune in some weeks or a month or two uh, I can always read what my thought was uh, with the numbers and um, I have some patterns I follow when I make my music where I keep drums up here and uh, have bass and solos and stuff but uh, develop your own patterns or copy mine I don't mind uh, nothing is taken from me if you use my patterns of doing this uh, I don't care it may be easier to follow me if, if you use my patterns, but there's no rules, so use any instrument you can want. Okay, let's see how this works. I'll press F2. Whoops, here we need to transpose. We need to change the sound. So uh, we'll make a 30 again. And then I'll take the same transpose as I did on the other channels. And I'll go down here. I'm lazy, so I'll just do it very fast less I have to think the better and the first sequence of them all will be 30 because that's where I have my tone then it should fit together as simple as that That's actually how Galactic started. Um, what I did, I was also fading out the sound uh, because it, it's a bit boring that it just keeps a note. And another thing you might have noticed is that uh, the fading sound actually um, kind of disappears at certain points with the notes. That's because it uses exactly the same pulse values. So using the same pulse program gives this um, disappearing sound. So you need to make another program if you are uh, uh, using multiple pulses uh, the initializing at the same time. Problem here is that in the first row here, uh, C, uh, instrument C and instrument 8 is using exactly the same pulse values. So they will be at uh, 1800, uh, 180 uh, and go up with exactly the same speed. So they will kind of remove each other. So uh, they'll cancel each other. So I'll go into the pulse program here and I'll say, okay, this one will start in 4, 4, 4 even, and uh, it will go for. Let's pick a number that is not the same here, so it doesn't interfere with each other. I'll say like 20 and 8. A, a is the opposite because I add 80. And then I pick a slower pulse, maybe 17, because that's a crazy number compared to 40. Uh, and FF to stay at whatever it gets to, and loop back to the first row, which is 3. And then I go back up to instrument here and say, OK, fader, you need to use this one instead. Dark fader. Ah, that's my name for this one. Sounds great. <laughs> yes. And uh, we'll try and see what happens here. See? There's no cribble in the sound anymore, uh, but it still doesn't fade out. So what I'll do now is in the end of my 30 pattern sequence thing, I'll uh, plug in a little gate off thing here. I press 1 on the normal keyboard above Q and it, it adds a gate off 
uh, and if you press A you get a, a, ga a gate on but gate off and this makes the sound start on the release phase ADSR so now it'll fade out slowly and uh, this is repeated in all four notes now because I reused my sequence 30 so let's see if this works <laughs> forever and uh, now you could add the solo and whatever I think this has been a, a little bit uh, of a fast start I already spent 40 minutes on this so um, I think I'll stop it here um, see how my microphone works and uh, if you guys can learn anything from this I hope so looking forward to do my next tutorial see you soon bye bye <laughs>